Yo, peace, love, blessings, and abundance to everyone that's out there. Well, today is a beautiful day in paradise. As you can see, I'm outside enjoying this nice, nice, comfortable weather. But uh, right now we're going to get into this routine. Uh, we're going to do one of Burpees Keen routine uh, marks. I think it was day uh, 146 days for him. So we're going to be doing 25 Navy SEALs. Uh, we're going to do 25 full pumps, 25 five, 25 six, and 46 five pumps. So uh, that should give us 680 push ups. So today is a great day to supper. And uh, the location where I'm at, well, where I am, I'm sorry. The location where I am is that uh, I'm in my old high school. Uh, man, they redid this school and it looks much better. It looks totally different. I only recognize it. But anyway, we're going to get into this routine 146 burpees. Let's get it. You know why? Because that's our new norm and we're going to do this by any means necessary. 146. think is the biggest stumbling block that most people face with this kind of journey? Honestly, it is they have the woe is me mentality. It's too hard. Life isn't fair. These things in life are, are, are not easy for me. You, you, you look to your left, you look to your right, and you start to judge yourself off other people. Like, if you're a female, well, she's skinny, and she doesn't work out as hard as I do, and that everything starts to corrupt your mind. You start to look around too much at other people and what they're doing, and that starts to corrupt your own dialogue. We are judging ourselves against too many fucking people. You have to judge what? yourself against yourself. And that's the one thing I started learning, man. This isn't a race against me and Rich Roll. This is a race against David Goggins and David Goggins See? alone. And once you can silence all that bullshit, all the outside interference and things that are attracting your mind to everything, you can then start to grow and realizing, hey, I'm stressed out for no reason. This is my own little race. This is my own timeline. It was important for me to finally realize, stop being all these fake people I used to be. Stop being afraid. There was no growth until I cut myself down to nothing, to the person I really was, the real human being. And once I found out who I really was, that's when I started growing. I was trying to build on top of a lied, fucked up foundation. You can't build a house on a fucked up foundation. So I had, to, I had to get down to the actual mineral soil of who I was, and that's when you can start real growth. And what is the role that suffering plays in that, or the willingness to suffer? It starts to peel all those layers away, all those artificial layers away. If you're willing to suffer and suffer and go back in the grind, that internal dialogue you have with yourself when you're in misery and you're uncomfortable, it's a real, scary, Seven. unfiltered, <laughs> no lying dialogue between you and yourself. And people know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about Eight. when you're in a bad spot in life and your mind is saying all kind of shit. That's who you really are. That's the real you. No Rocky Balboa moments going on up there. <laughs> like, yeah. hey, you know, it's around 14. Let's come on, we got this. No, it's like, fuck this, I'm out of here, man. This is crazy. That's where the growth happens. When you're able to stay in that moment and talk Ten. to yourself, talk to yourself back into the suck of wherever you're going through, and you start stripping those layers away. But as you're stripping those layers away, you're building calluses over top of shit in your mind. That's where the growth starts to happen. Is when you have to force yourself to stay in it. You can't. You can't leave it. Never. I don't think enough about people that have that, that have wronged me or situations that have wronged me. Because once you once you've uh, come to a place where you are really happy with who you are in life, no one fucks with you anymore. Even though they're fucking with you, it doesn't fuck with. It you. doesn't fuck with you. You know, like all these, I used to be so hurt by everything in the military and if someone did something or said something, I'm like, man, I have overcome so much shit. 
There's not, not like 14. I, I'm just in a really good headspace right now. My headspace, I own it. A lot of people own other people's headspace. I own my own shit now. What do you mean own other? Like they're just all caught up in what other people think about them and running all these narratives. And that's right. Good thing. They're, they're more caught up in what other people think about them than how you feel about your own personal self. So a lot of people have their brain and their mind on rent to a whole bunch of motherfuckers in the world. 16. I am paying rent on my own shit. I finally put a down payment on it, and I'm making payments every day on day in my own fucking brain. So you don't, you don't fucking yeah. control that shit anymore, man. I got it. So walk me through a day in the life. What's it look like right now? Well, I mean, it's gotta be crazy. Every morning I get up, I still get my running. Every morning, how do you structure the training? The training is basically structured. Yeah, that's okay. Um, Jennifer, what we have today? 18. We have this at seven o'clock in the morning. Roger that. That means I gotta be up by four o'clock in the morning to run. That's how it works. That's how all my shit works. So she lays out the schedule of events. Mm, two hours. You just you just set it two hours earlier. Or whatever. She says it could 17. take an hour to get to Rich Rolls. Let's say we were at seven o'clock today in the morning. It takes an hour to get to Rich Rolls with no traffic. Okay, let's let's block in an hour fifteen for Rich Roll. Okay, we got that. The morning time, 18. I'm, I'm going to run seven miles this morning. I need uh, 52.30 for that. Roger that, put in. Shit, shower, shave, add that in. So the schedule 19. dictates, but I have all that time. Always push it back, right? So that back. means getting up at 1.30. Trust me. Roger that. I've done that several times. Yeah. <laughs> several. How much sleep times. do you usually get? I, I like getting Swim. seven to eight hours of sleep. Nowadays I can do that. But there's times where the schedule says, hey, man, you're getting three hours. And if that's the case, mm -hmm. right, Merry Christmas. Guess what? Right now, it's, it's 20. easy to be happy. It's easy to smile. Those are the good times. The good times. Those times don't need to be trained. You know, I had to train myself for good times. Those times, for most people, don't need to be trained. What I'm trying to give you all is the misery of sometimes we go through in life. Those are the times we don't want to fucking talk about. We want to skip forward to peace. Let's skip all this pain and suffering and misery of real life. Let's let, let's cover it over, nice big blanket, and let's find peace. No. Sorry. It's not possible. You got to go into that fucking hellhole of life that you have that fucked you up and fix it. And that's what I'm here to do. You gotta go to war yeah. with yourself before yeah. there's peace. That's what I say in the book. You yeah. said in the book. You yeah. must go to war with yourself before you find peace. So I'm trying to give you tools on how to do that. And I'm not gonna say a smile <laughs> and be happy about yeah. it. It's a hard journey. Uh, it's a real journey. Woo! It's so crazy. That's why I look at motivation. Motivation is just a spark, but those little sparks, if somebody comes by real quick with some water, that fire is down, it's out. But if you come by and that little fire, no one touches it, and that little fire, which is motivation, which is kindling, and that kindling grows off to like they call it one hour fuels, two hour fuels, 10 hour fuels, 10,000 hour fuels, you want that thing to boil over and catch a nice big log. It's gonna burn a long time. And that big log starts catching everything on fire. This is your soul. So motivation a lot of times can be fucking just put some water on it, puts it out. All right. <clears throat> that motivation needs to turn into Both drive, points. passion, obsession to what you want to become. And once you become obsession or driven, it's a fucking inferno. So now you got to call in tons of firefighters and call in for help for here, call for help from there. And they're not putting that shit out. Once they can take that thing out, it's got to burn itself out. Two. So, but obsession is self-generated. You can't will another person to become obsessed. Not at all. That has to, you know, be something that is cultivated deep, from deep inside deep, yourself. Deep. Three. And most inside. people never experience what it's like to be obsessed. And I think we put a negative label. We oh yeah label on obsession. Oh he's, hell yeah. He's obsessed. Four. No, it's to me. It's a it's a dead on. It's a it's a compliment. It's a compliment, man. To be, and a lot of times it can fuck you up. It can ruin your life. You can be all obsessed by, I'll tell you one thing. If you want to be great, you want to be the best motherfucker ever at what you Bye. do.
you're going to be misunderstood by everybody because you're going to be so fucking obsessed and so driven to get there. That's what it takes. That's the truth. It takes every second of your fucking life. Anybody said balance? Yeah, balance is important for a lot of fucking people. All it right. is. But if you want to fucking go to that edge where people do not like you, don't understand you, question everything you fucking do, you, you've arrived. When you are misunderstood to the point where fucking people think you're psycho Six. and you're nuts and you're this and that, why are you in the fucking gym at 1 o'clock in the fucking morning? You've got to be doing an op for fucking 13, 14 hours at the ranger school, man, at the gym. What's wrong? You will never understand what is wrong with you. And that's why I'm so fucking glad you don't. Because I'm in the right fucking spot. When people don't understand you anymore, you're in that spot of obsession and drive. When people like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? I don't want to talk to you, man, because you're not going to get it. It's all about mindset. That's it, man. You have to change the dialogue within your head. And one thing I guarantee you, there's something out there about January 1. All that kindling that, that you started, all that motivation, you just burn out by about 10 to 12 days Woo. later. Yeah. So let's see how far you can take that shit. <laughs> let's see if you can get a fucking That is a challenge going. from Goggins to you. Usually it's 10 to 12 days, man. People always come to me, hey, I want a workout program. I don't want to get them anymore. Because you're going to waste my fucking time. You know, I know most people out there, once that fucking one alarm clock goes off, the wrong time of the day, I'm not going to the gym. Right, or they get the workout program, but then they're like, hey, they hit you up again. What, what kind of watch do I need to get? That's right. What That's kind right. of shoes? That's well, right. Just keep coming. Keep Every coming, man. Every day goes by without anything going on. Keep coming. Go to the store, buy a pair of shoes, and Merry Christmas. Have fun with that shit. <laughs> Call me after you lose some fucking weight running your ass in the dirt, and then we'll work on some other shit. Right on. Get your base on. 13. He knocked my mom out from the top of the stairs. I can see 13. him coming down the stairs, just dragging her. And she was kind of lifeless. And that's when I got off the couch, scared to death, jumped on my father, and he beat the shit out of me. 14. We never went to school hardly at all because we were bruised up. He also believed in just us working the family business. So, so going to school really didn't happen to me at all. Not only did he take it back, he also had a learning disability. I never forget the third 15. grade. There was this teacher that was extremely rough on me. And this time in my life, I did not need this. And she believed I needed to be in a special school because of my learning disability. And this is what I talked about. People are talking about manage your expectations. This teacher managed my expectations. She saw the learning disability. She saw I was socially unable to survive in this world. She saw I was messed up. So she managed my expectations. She said we need to put David Goggins 16. in a special school. I came from hell. And when you come from hell not knowing how to fight, this is what happens to you. What happens to you is you become a fucked up kid that cannot survive in society. 17. I'll never forget one time during a basketball game, there was this coach, Mr. Trout. He knew me when I was a kid. In that school where I was in third grade, he just stepped back. Mr. Trout always loved me. 18. This white man loved the shit out of me. I don't know why he did. But he 18. was my JV basketball coach my sophomore year. The visiting team was at our home stadium. It was at the end of the game. And the visiting team started chanting, I was only a black person in the whole gone stadium. 19. They started chanting, nigger, nigger, nigger. That's 19. all I remember. At that time of my life, that's all I remember. But now at 42 years old, I can look back on that time with clear eyes and a clear mind and see what Mr. Trout did for me. He went in that locker room where I was crying and upset, and he cried with me. This white man cried with me, but at that time, I, I didn't see that. All I saw was red. I saw hate. This whole town hated me. Everybody's against me. My mind lost it. And for some reason, I couldn't sleep on my bed. So to this day, I don't know why the floor felt so comfortable. And at 22, 21 years old, I went from 175 pounds to 297 pounds. Fat, out of shape, insecure. I was everything everybody said I was going to be. That's what I was. And it makes you feel like shit. 23. So I got a job spraying for cockroaches at nighttime. I'm not saying it's a bad job, but I didn't want to do it. 
So about six months, I went around to the local eatery and sprayed some cockroaches. This one time I came home, the first thing I do, I walk in my living room, turn the TV on. The first thing I do is I walk back to the, um, to take a shower. Yeah. Woo. And I would listen to the TV as I was trying to take a shower. It changed my life. It held me accountable for what I wasn't facing. Remember All right. Navy still training. And I sat down. Yeah. I, I came out of the shower uh, and I sat down. Something brought me back five, to sit down pump. and watch these guys go through hell. I saw a ton of them quitting. Ringing the bell. Ringing the bell means you quit Navy still training. I saw them putting their helmet down. This went on through the whole show. And it finally got to the very end. There's about 15 to 20 guys at the very end. And this one statement changed my life. They were all sitting there in their dressed whites. And the CEO, all right. the main officer, stands up in front five, of his And he looked sharp. And he, I can tell he stood for something. And he said, we live in a world where mediocrity is often rewarded. These men up here detest mediocrity. When you hear a statement like that, it forces you to think about yourself. Why? I wasn't even fucking mediocre. I wasn't either. I was the bottom of the barrel of life. I chose the four-lane highway for my life, the easy route. The route that has gas stations. Two. The route that has fucking signs that say 20 miles to the next service stop. All this shit. I chose that route. Most of us choose the four-lane highway. When I was born, there was also a shovel over here in the fucking corner. Three. That's the, no one wants to go into the shovel. They want to choose the four lane fucking highway. That's the, that's the nice route. The shovel means you're going to fucking hurt. The shovel means you're going to suffer. The shovel means you're going to hit rock a lot of times. And we all know what digging through rock is like. Four. When you hit a fucking root, you got to fucking get some more tools out. If I have no more tools, get the fucking shovel. I was shooting the four lane highway. This is when I decided to pick up that fucking shovel that we all decide not to take. I had to make a change in my life. Uh, I said, you know what? I have to join the military. I went on the Navy SEAL training. Became the only person I believe in history to go through three Navy SEAL hell weeks in one year. I completed two of them. Hell week is 130 hours of continuous training. You might get two hours of sleep. The first few weeks, Get you ready for this hard one week of training. I had to become a fit. No matter what was in front of me, Woo. I had to figure out a way to overcome Seven. it. So when things hit you in life that you're afraid of or you're not good at, the first thing you're going to say to yourself is, why am I here anyway? This isn't for me. The water's too cold. The sun's too hot. I'm getting up too early. Why am I doing this to myself? Uh, That's just a normal mind. Shall I count eight? I had to Thank start training my mind to think about how the fuck can I get through this? Not giving myself a way out. Never giving myself a way out. Creating a wall around all the fucking ways out in my mind. Nah. I had to slowly start to build this fucking wall so my mind knew this motherfucker is not going to give himself a way out of here. And my first told me I had a huge setback. I was broken. See? My legs were broken. I had double pneumonia. I got rolled back to day one, week one, Navy SEAL training. I got through that second hell week. During the second hell week, I actually hurt <laughs> my knee. I continued to limp around for a couple weeks. I couldn't well, make it anymore. I got rolled back to day one, week one. Well. I'll never forget standing there in front of Captain Bowen. He was the CEO in charge of Navy SEAL training at the time. And he had no mercy on anybody. If he believed in managing your expectations, I wouldn't be here today. He challenged 13. me. I was challenged my whole life, not by the mindset of managing expectations, by exceeding expectations, not by managing them. I'm standing there. I'm sitting in his office. He looks at me. He goes, Doggy, this is the last time we're going to put 13? you in Navy SEAL training. This will be your third hell week in one year. We're not going to put you through a fourth. So this is your last time. I'm sitting thinking, how am I going to get through this? I'm, I'm badly jacked up. My legs are broken. 13. My knee is messed up. And he goes, you have a couple of months to get better. 
couple months isn't going to do it. I won't be healed up in a couple months. But I realize I'm going to get through this shit. I'm going to find a way to get through this. Why I put uh, 15, in my mind. I guess. So my third hell week, I well, went there with pretty much, I would put a black sock on first. I would get duct tape. And I duct tape uh, my ankles all the way up to my calf. 16. Every single morning. And then I put another black sock over it. And what that did, that prevented me from moving my ankle. So I didn't really, I, I wasn't flexing my shin as much. And I started running with just my hip flexing. And this hell week, it was a bad hell week, and a guy died 17. on Thursday morning of hell week. I went on to become a Navy SEAL. Greatness is not something that you meet once. It's something that you meet Woo. thousands of fucking times 18. in your life. And you don't reach it if you're not constantly in constant fucking pursuit of fucking greatness. So if my mind were to say right now, I'm great, I just lost. Woo. We're going to grow. We're 19. not going to triple down on our strengths. We're not going to do that crap. We're going to work on our weaknesses. So we, grow. we need friction to do that. Without friction, there's no growth. Without friction, there's confusion. Confusion is, David God, how did you become who you are today? I put a bunch of fucking friction in my life. And I grew. That's how I did it. You know how you get middle stuff? It's a lifestyle. Instead of hitting that fucking snooze button in the fucking morning, and not making your bed, not cleaning your house, you don't hit the snooze button. You get up. You don't want to go run? You go run. You don't want to go swim, you go swim. You don't want to make your bed, you make your bed. You don't want to clean your house, you clean your house. You don't want to study, you fucking study. I got the palace in mind, so that became my life. If you say you wake up at 4 o'clock in the fucking morning to go run, wake up at 4 o'clock and it's going to suck. It's not going to... Alright. What's that, 22? When I made the decision, the conscious decision to become a warrior, I realized that my, that my mentality had to be very different. And what that meant was I had to put myself through a bunch of principles to gain the warrior mentality. Some guys are born with it, I believe that. Some guys are born because they have some great childhood, and their dad's tough on them, and they build this mental toughness and this discipline and skill. I didn't have this, so I had to design a crucible to put myself through to gain this warrior mentality. I chose this world to be a warrior, and I would choose it again if I came back to the world. But the mentality of a warrior is very different from your mentality. You must be that person on that door, open, get ready to open it, thinking to yourself, if I die, so be it. All right. The only way you can go in that door is knowing there's a great twenty-five six to die. Like you beat a seal, you train with five yeah. ammo. Woo. Jump out of airplane. Every, 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 everything you do, you can die. So to be a warrior, why people don't understand me, I'm glad you don't understand me. Merry Christmas. Good on you. All right. Because being a six warrior pump. takes a whole different mindset. <laughs> a whole different mindset to know that there's a great chance I may not be in the middle. Like I was in for 21 years. I'm lucky. I'm very lucky that I'm alive. They will talk to you if they still run. But if you sign up for that dial line to be oh. a safety, like a seal, your six? mentality changes. Okay. I may not live. One. You gotta accept that. And that's the mentality you have. And that's what makes you a warrior. If you're scared to die, you're a bad warrior. Two. I wasn't born this motherfucker. I made him. At the bottom of insecurities, fear, self-doubt, lies, was me buried in the fucking field position. How I got out Three. of that was recognizing it, being honest with it, being truthful with it, and then fixing it. Warriors. Real warriors. And I want to say that is a whole different mentality. Four. So I've worked with people who have the courage to jump no. on grenades and kill themselves to save That's everybody three. around them. Three, I'm sorry. That's the kind three. of mentality it takes to be a SEAL. Does every Navy SEAL have it? No. But that's what SEALs are 
that's what we try to do. That's why maybe so training buds is so hard. We're trying to find that person who's willing to go the distance. And the distance is your life. So when I'm talking to people right now, maybe what I say to you does not resonate because why you're not willing to give your life for something. Every SEAL, at least most, I can't speak for everyone, most of us are. A lot of people go fight for this country. A lot of them are not willing to do that. Am I talking bad about them? No, don't take it and twist my words. People like to twist words. Bye. I thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for that. A lot of people are scared. Navy SEALs are scared also. But a lot of us have a way to realize that what we have decided to do in our lives. Yeah. And it takes a great sacrifice, and that sacrifice could be your life. Six. And that you have to be able to do that to become a warrior. If you go into combat scared, you can be scared, but you can't be so scared, it makes you afraid to fight. That makes sense. We're able to control that. Yeah. And a lot of us are able to put ourselves Woo. to hell and become a devil. What's that, seven? But at the end of the day, the worst thing that can happen to a man is he becomes civilized. Once you become so civilized that you have everything you want, that warrior mentality that I'm so proud of that I had to, it wasn't, I, I, I wasn't seven. Born, I had to go through the crucible of my life to acquire it. You always want to keep that thing sharp like a sword. So you always, you don't have to sharpen it every day like you did when you were going to combat. But if you leave it alone for too long, it gets a little dull. And that's my mind. I always want to sharpen it. I don't hey. do these things every single day of my life. But you always got to go back and sharpen that sword every now and then to make sure that that mentality is still there and the refrigerator is still empty. Because you always want to keep that edge. And that edge will keep you going forward. <laughs> Woo. I'm constantly uh. changing the way I think. The core of who I am? I'll never change that. I'm proud of that. Warrior Spartan mentality. Today is a new opportunity to chase a dream. It's not going to be easy. We may not be up to the task. We may not feel tough enough, good enough, but that we can ever achieve greatness. But this is why we grind. We must find joy in it. Because what we work for is what we become. I work every Eleven. fucking day. It doesn't end. Take ownership. Take extreme ownership. Don't make excuses. Don't blame any other person or any other thing. Get control of your ego. Don't hide your delicate pride. From the truth. Right. Take ownership of everything Woo. in your world, the good and the bad. Take ownership 13. of your mistakes, take ownership of your shortfalls, take ownership of your problems, and then take ownership of the solutions that will get those problems solved. Take ownership. Of your mission, take 14. of your job, of your team, of your future, and take ownership of your life. <laughs> the victory. 15. Uh, when we put every 15. last ounce of sweat, grit, and toughness Whatever challenge lies in front of us, build something inside that's stronger than iron. I don't give a fuck who is in front of me, and I can stop me. I became obsessed. I became obsessed 16. with being the baddest motherfucker that God ever created. Am I that? I don't care. I believe it. 
Once you become obsessed with something, obsessed, it's okay to be unbalanced for a while. It's okay. Don't be all this stuff. People say you gotta be balanced to be the best in the world at what you do. It's not about being a Navy SEAL, people. The best at what you 17. do, you have to be unbalanced to find every bit of fucking energy and strength that you have to pull it off. Then you get balanced once you become great. There's one thing to be hungry, it's another thing 18. when you're starving. Starving for greatness and starving for success. People look at me and say, oh my God, you're a masochist or this and that. I'm going to get into how bad I was with all the training and still training. I had 21 stretch fractures going through hell week. 18. 21 stretch fractures. You know what I did? I taped my ankles up. Roger that. I want to be a seal. So I did it. Become obsessed with being great. It changes everything. 19. No one will outwork me. No one. My number one competition is me. It's always you versus you. You gotta be the one to get up every morning, be disciplined, put in the morning. consistent daily hard work because that gains success. No coach, no trainer, no mentor, uh, no boss can do it. You versus you. Right. Woo! 21. so much you start to become civilized the refrigerator gets full you start getting, ah. making money and you start Woo. not getting cold anymore i'm retired 24. Once you, and at 40 people should be playing basketball or football or, or, or beating them up you start to believe this shit. and it becomes in your fucking mind like there's people who are retiring you know at 40 something years old or, or 30 something years old at 40 ah. people still putting 100 mile weeks Still doing uh, thousands of pull-ups, thousands of push-ups. All right. Because I'm not allowing myself to become sick. That's a hundred. What we got left? We got four to six five pumps. Woo, shit. That's a... <laughs> civilized. The worst thing that happened to a oh, man God. is become civilized. You four to six five pumps. You, 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 you lose that. Why the fuck am I doing this shit? I'm good. Right. You ain't good, man. You sit out the way. You're never fucking arrived. And that's just my mentality. You may have more, but you've never fucking arrived. You want to be uncommon amongst uncommon people. Period. Uncommon amongst uncommon people is one of the greatest ways that's to one. put it. That's it. Like, if, you were, if, if, if you're, if you like, for me, what, what got me in trouble with the Navy SEALs is I wanted to be one so bad. So bad. I fought my ass off. And I saw them as uncommon people. That's Very two. uncommon. But once you become a Navy SEAL, you're all Navy SEAL, so guess what happens? You're fucking common again. I want to be uncommon amongst uncommon people. I wanted to be the guy, I don't care if you fucking like me, I don't care if you don't understand me. I didn't give a fuck. Once I went through this fucking journey, this path of life, you ain't got any whole bunch of fucking guys that don't fucking like me. I don't give a fuck. I'm a warrior. Period. There's a lot of guys that have been in a lot more combat than me. A warrior's not always that. A warrior is a motherfucker who says, Four. hey, I'm here again today. I'm here again tomorrow. I'm going to be here the next day. I'm 50 years old. I'm still fucking getting after it. It's a person that puts no fucking limit on what's possible. And that's what got me in trouble a lot. That's why I went to Ranger School right. as a SEAL. That's why I tried to go to Delta Force twice. You know, I, I've, been, I've been through all these different training programs because I was looking for, in the military where I saw it, Woo. in the training, Six. these people get their ass handed to them. After they get out, a lot of them get civilized. 
I always wanted to go back into training. No matter where I was at, I wanted to go back to war. And the war was in that training program where you see guys who can quit, guys who are brutal, guys who are suffering, guys who are... You go, so as a CEO, you don't fall to your ranger school. I did. I put in seven chips, got turned down, my eighth you know, got accepted. I went at 28, 29 years old. And they go, why'd you go? Because I started becoming civilized. I started becoming complacent. I, I, I need to get my fucking ass kicked again. And when you go as a SEAL going down to yeah, you have no rank in Ranger School, you could be a major. You're just fucking Joe Brown. You're nobody. And you're not eating, you're not sleeping. So I always would put myself, I would immerse myself in shit like that. Hey. Even I would climb the ladder and I'd intentionally fall back down that motherfucker. They say, all right, man, get soft, dude. Get soft. Kick your fucking ass again. And I, you know, it's kind of the process. You know, it's important to always stay hungry and never get too civilized. Yeah. Hi. Life should be fun also, but it should also be challenging to you. You should always be wanting to grow. You don't find yourself, if you like bench pressing and you bench press all the fucking time, what are you finding out? If you like to swim, that's all you want to do is swim. What are you finding yeah. out? Put that, you know, people always, I, I, people talk about triple down on your fucking strikes. Right. That's the fucking weakest shit in the world. No. Triple down on your fucking weaknesses. Yeah. Find out something about yourself. You already know the, the good shit. You already know the happy shit. Right. That's why on my on my Facebook page, like, why don't you talk about good times? Yeah. You know how to get through that shit, motherfucker. <laughs> you don't need a fucking you. Don't, you don't need no one to tell you how to get through. It's happy. Right. That's easy shit. Right. I'm gonna tell you how you can help yourself get through the times that suck. Real life. This is real life. Ninety percent of your life will Never. suck. 10% will be fucking happy. You may be lucky guy, have a lot of fucking money, have a great ass woman, all this shit. Trust me. One on one with that fucking guy, he's missing something. His life still sucks because he hasn't faced something that followed him his whole fucking life. Well, yeah. Something is still eating that motherfucker up. Almost everybody. Everybody. Eating you the fuck up. But maybe you found a good way, how I did growing up, on how to ignore that voice that's saying, Woo, you ain't facing some shit. 13. If I try to make it all pretty and shit, that's not what my life was. It was a violent, violent struggle daily to get where I'm at today. I'm not going to water it down. I'm not going to water 14. it down. Shit wasn't fun. It ain't fun today. But I'm happy. Don't you think that your happiness is probably elevated by the amount of pain that you've gone through. 100%. So the amount of suffering that you understand, the amount of pain that you've gone through makes you appreciate the happiness and the, the beautiful moments with much more intensity. That's what weak people miss about my story. Weak people hear this soft kid, oh my God, you must be Oh my God, what the hell's wrong with them? You're missing the fucking story. Oh, You're not there. listening to the story, man. Look what I overcame. If that doesn't put some badge of honor tattooed in your fucking brain for the rest of your life, you can die today talking to Joe Rogan? You're missing the story, man. Am I happy? What the fuck do you think? Don't, mis don't misunderstand the passion in which I speak for not being intensely happy. Happiest person in the world. 16. But I'm not done. So I'm not going to speak to you like, oh man, everything is great. No, I have a lot more shit to do. So I try hard to continue to grow that. I'm, I'm trying to break a record again. I'm trying to cross Death Valley as fast as possible, top of my way. And um, I'm constantly trying to put goals in front of me, but the biggest 17. thing is trying to find more of myself. And the only way I can find more is to silence the world out as much as I can, because it's, it's, it's getting busier every day. It's getting faster. And the faster it gets, the more you are missing who the fuck you are. So I trap my own mind a lot. I say, look, man, I 18. put my phone away, I put shit away, and I go dark. I go dark a lot, and it's because I have to find out. I'm on a journey of life, and we all have a different journey. And I want to be in my fucking pine box, and I believe your spirit lives forever. It has to be too fucking powerful. No way in hell that thing just dies when we die. I want to be able to look back on my life when I'm all dead and I'm so fucking proud of myself forever. This is all temporary shit to me. I want to be very proud of who I was as a man and change who I used to be. The liar, the insecure guy, the guy who can, whatever. I want to be proud. When I, if I die now, if I die at 80, if I die at 90, 100, I want to look at myself and say, proud of myself. So when we look to our right, we look to our left, we're looking for help. And if you can build that self, 
You can build that total accountability in oneself. One and one. And it's not about being selfish. I'm trying to create a better me, so hopefully people who are hearing this are taking it the right way can say, I can run a mile. It ain't about running 205 fucking miles through the floor without being a city. It ain't about all that shit. It doesn't matter. I want you to see how fucking far you can go. And that's all it's about, yourself. 23. And that's where it all comes from. 23. Shortcuts or looking for the easy All right. way. It's about We're at 25. Your emotions so you can make good decisions. It's about having the discipline to control your ego so your ego doesn't get out of hand and control you. There is no easy way. There is only hard work, late nights early mornings, practice, rehearsal, repetition, right. study, sweat, blood, toil, frustration, and discipline. We're at 25, no. man. Facing your fears. It takes discipline to face your fears so you can conquer them. Discipline, the root of all good qualities, the driver of daily execution. Stronger, smarter, faster, 27, healthier, better, free. Envision what it feels like when you're done. What it feels like recording. after you've worked out or you've held the line on your food intake or you've through some monotonous project. And contrary to that, envision what you will feel like later when, when you let the discipline slack. Looking for that, 
you won't fight it. The shortcut is a lie. The hack doesn't get you there. And if you want to take the easy road, it won't take you to where you want to be. Discipline is the root of all good qualities. You have to absolutely apply it to things outside of just waking up early. All right, six, we got ten more. It's working out every day, making yourself stronger and faster and more flexible and healthier. To reach goals and overcome obstacles and be the best version of you possible will not Woo. happen by itself. It will not happen cutting corners, taking shortcuts, or looking for the easy way. It's about disciplining your emotions so you can make good decisions. It's about having the discipline to control your ego. Get out of hand and control you. There is no easy way. Seven. There is only hard work, late nights, early mornings, practice, rehearsal, repetition, study, sweat, blood, toil, frustration, and discipline. Third eight. It's about facing your fears. It takes discipline to face your fears so you can conquer them. Third discipline, nine. the root of all good qualities, the driver of daily execution. Stronger, smarter, faster, <laughs> Woo! healthier. Body. Six more. Three. Envision what it feels like when you're done. What it feels like after you've worked out, or you've held the line on your food intake, or you've pushed through some monotonous project. And contrary to that, envision what you will feel like later when you let the discipline slack. What do you want? Weak. And if you know that you're falling behind. So often, the easy path what calls is us to be leaping for that moment to give in to short-term gratification. Discipline will not allow that. So work through the weakness. Fight what through it. the temptation and hold the line. The discipline calls for strength and fortitude and will. It won't accept weakness. It won't tolerate another breakdown. But it is worth it. What if I? That's one, baby. Because discipline equals freedom. Discipline equals freedom. One forty-six in the book. Have a great one, everyone.